four. Oh, cool. All right. Today Whatever. is July 13th. It's 1134. This is the, um, call, I'm calling the Disability Access Advisory Committee meeting to order. And we have, I believe everyone on the committee is here. Is this correct? I believe so. Well, let's do a roll no, call. Someone's missing. No, Xander's missing. missing. Oh, Xander. yeah. Missing Xander. Right. Okay. He had Xander he, sent he, an email that he would yep. be late in all likelihood. Yep. Right? Yes. Okay. Marty, you're here, right? I'm here. Marty Smith. Lori. What? Yes. Lori, just here. say, yeah. Ruth. Yes. Saren. Yes. Elise. Yes. And Myra, we're here, and Xander will hopefully come later. Okay, so uh, anybody have any announcements? Okay, anybody have any new business? Well, then I guess we can get into the old business. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I want to say is that because Maureen and I didn't get to talk this month to plan the agenda, the stuff that isn't on it, um, I think will come back next month. Like we have to really start to review the report that came from the consultant um, that we've had for a few months, but we've had so much to do. We haven't really had time to do it. Um, I'm particularly interested in knowing uh, which departments are really on top of this and which departments might need a little bit of a push. So that's one of the things that I would like to talk about. And then there was an email from somebody, I don't know who, that asked for the uh, a, a survey of the listening devices in town rooms. Um, who did that? Because you can me, tell us more me. what you wanted. Who did? Uh, me, Maureen. Um, oh. Yeah, so, um, you know, some of our public meeting spaces do have assisted listening devices, such as the town room. Um, there's a meeting space in the police station. There could be other rooms that I'm not aware of, but the bank center um, does not have any assisted devices. And hmm. I know um, that, that, you know, during non COVID times that, you know, that's where we have senior services and, and, and have, you know, community meetings and all kinds of stuff. And it's been expressed again and again to the senior center director uh, several times for the need for assisted devices there. Um, and do you mean a loop? A loop. There's different variety. There's different okay. options out there of okay. assisted devices. I'm not an expert. I feel like if we did dive into it, I will become an expert in assisted device. <laughs> okay. Um, also, maybe the Jones Library doesn't have assisted devices. The North Amherst Library does not have assisted devices. Um, that's probably true then of South Amherst as well. Correct. Correct. And so there is a grant, um, an annual grant through the mass office of disability. Um, they have an annual grant application, um, to remove barriers of, you know, physical barriers and, um, and then communication barriers and stuff like that. So, um, I know, for instance, Northampton applied for um, this very grant last year to provide assisted devices to all their meeting rooms, um, and they were awarded it. And so that got me thinking, like, oh, that this would be an eligible project. And I've just I've heard a lot of members of the public express the need for assisted devices. And then also in context of this sort of COVID world. Um, you know, as as the town sort of contemplates meeting rooms, um, whether they'll be hybrid meetings or virtual meetings forever or whatever, th this could be a, a, a nice um, sort of add on in context of that as 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 we're going to try to be as flexible as as we can legally be you know, possible um, for meetings. So anyways. Um, so do you need, um, what do you need, when's the grant due and what do you need? Uh, it is due in October. And so I'm asking the IT department to do an inventory of all the meeting rooms 
um, of what what is there and what is not there and and what is their working condition. <laughs> Sounds, yeah, sounds, yeah, like sounds familiar, similar. doesn't it? That sounds familiar. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they'll be a little bit better at responding. <laughs> One would hope. Um, so um, maybe you could get also a letter from the senior center director supporting the grant. She would, she definitely would. And maybe the library systems director she would, I, I'm sure. If there is an assisted device there, I, I know that they would love it. So that's a good, that's a good um, suggestion, Myra. So maybe, Maureen, a, a, are these devices portable? Like for example, at Jones Library, if they have the meeting in different rooms, could it be carried into those rooms? That's an excellent question. I don't, I only can speak about the devices that we have in the town room. Mm -hmm. So in the town room and town hall, that room has like an like an audio system and every and all the microphones are connected to the audio system. And we are assisted devices. I wish I knew the names of them, but they look like walkie talkies. And so you mm -hmm. would, you know, just put this device on your, you know, in your pocket or hold it and it automatically um, hooks up to your he hearing device, which then uh, automatically tunes into the uh, overall audio system for the room. So you could walk around or whatever, you could move around in the room, um, but it would only be, uh, it would only work in that room. In that room. But yeah, well, I, I mean, maybe-, maybe the yeah. Maybe they have upgraded the systems. Maybe right. they have portable ones. And yeah, that they, maybe that should be something, I don't know if we need to look into that or um, or if you just apply for the grant and then while, we're, while you're using it to purchase material, then you can make the decision at that point. But portability probably might be helpful. And yeah, another yeah. thing that I'm, uh, very curious about is the interpreter services like does the town have an interpreter no. and uh, what is the usage of the interpreter because there might be some people like uh, they might be intimidated to go to meetings because they don't know what's going on very good points uh saren um so the we do have um, a, at least one staff person um, that can speak uh, Spanish, is fluent in Sp uh, Spanish. That's Angela Mills. Um, she works in the town manager's office. And I believe we have another sta staff person that is fluent in Mandarin, um, which is um, one of the languages uh, used in China. Um, I and think Saren was referring to sign language. language. Oh, sign language. language. Oh, okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah, so we don't have a staff person that is a, I guess that would be a ASL interpreter. Um, but so there are uh, specific protocols for that. So if someone needs um, requests a that uh, that accommodation, they would need to contact our um, the town. And we would then need to seek out uh, an interpreter. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of them out there. Um, nope. So um, more advanced notice is preferable. Um, but that is something that, you know, legally, sh you know, should be provided um, with, with the expectation that they would need to inform the town in advance notice just because it, it is is based on availability of that individual. And Maureen, I just do you know if it's um, really clear on the website that 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 there are procedures? Does anybody know? So about the website, or, um, I think you're getting at is the website ADA accessible? Um, no, I'm, I'm no. Actually, that's not what I'm talking about right oh. now. I was just wondering if it is prominently displayed on the website that people who need interpretive services should do X to get them? Or do you that's, have to dig deep into the website to find that? 
That's a very good question. Um, and that is something that I personally have been uh, wanting to understand better um, since January. And um, unfortunately, I just, due to the limited time that I can de devote to everything, um, I haven't personally looked into that. But um, Marie, I can do that for you. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, it, it is something that needs to be looked at and to have a formal, you know, look and feel and where that's located. If it's on the manager's website, is it on the DAAP website? Is it on the human resources website? And like what kind three. of, or all three. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, or it could be on every page right? Um, right. and um, on the website. So it just kind of pops up at the top or somewhere. Um, um, and so, th so that kind of question is, is, is very much an organizational question for the organization of the town of how they want to handle that. So I would hope that it's listed somewhere. Is it easily, you know, visible or found that I don't know, but I I'm going to make a note of that. And I, I hope to have some sort of update for you in time of the next meeting. Yeah, and I'll try to look today or tomorrow and track it down and send you info, Maureen. Thank you. So, so should we segue into the discussion? Uh, I mean, we're not having a website discussion, but that's the other thing that I wanted to bring up is that we at one point had voted that we would support the expenditure. Remember, there was $50,000 for capital that was going to be reserved for, D, uh, for disability access each year. And we one time took a vote to support work on the website and we never heard any more about that. So that's one of the things that I wanted to bring up. Um, so for, if yeah. anybody has any ideas about that, that you wanna forward to Maureen for questions that have to do with the website, I already talked about you know, accessibility and testing for accessibility, not just plugging it into a piece of software that they might um, you know, purchase and have the software make it allegedly accessible and then be done with it because that doesn't work. So I, um, I, you know, this question is also uh, a question, you know, the, the, um, the, the, the information coming on the website about getting interpretive services. So if anybody has anything else that you want Maureen to look into about the website, or well, about, I, you know, that would be good it, to know just so we can talk about it the next time. Yeah, it so comes this to is my... Tori. Yeah. And I just want to backtrack a little bit. And I want to say that there are, except, there are um, FM listening devices for people who are deaf or hard, well, hard of hearing um, that are portable. It's just a matter of doing the research and finding the right equipment. And I would suggest um, that you might wanna consult with um, people who are deaf themselves and find out uh, what, what is new, what is being used right now. Um, yeah. So that is my suggestion. And the other, um, there was something else you guys were talking about. Um, oh, the website. It is, um, in order to be ADA compliant, you should have on the website um, how to go about um, requesting interpreters, um, sign language interpreters, and, and how long you need them to, uh, whoever wants to go to a meeting, how long you need, and usually you need two weeks um, at a minimum to request sign language interpreters um, because it's, it's not easy. And people who are deaf know this, they're aware of that. Um, but that would mean that they would need to be aware of the meetings coming up if they wanted to come to a meeting. So they have to be aware uh, in advance, at least like three weeks or 
a month before the meeting. So I don't know how that works. I don't know how early you post your meetings. Well, there's a calendar of regularly scheduled meetings. Um, Neat meetings are really never posted more than three or four days in advance because an agenda can't be posted. You know, I mean, you can't put that together so far in advance. But right. right, isn't that right, Pat? There's this calendar that has all the scheduled, all those committees of the town council and, right. and the regular town council have a regular schedule. A fairly regular schedule. And at the um, on the calendar on the website does have the current day, couple of days, meetings and times. Um, but I don't know how accessible that is. I mean, it is to me because, you know, but I and Tori and, but I'm not sure uh, for others. Uh, is there a place I, that has all the posted agendas that are, you know, everything that's posted for meetings within three days that would be accessible? I, I've I, actually found, I've actually no, found not, meetings. Uh, it's not that bad. I found meetings on, on there. Well, if you connected go, to them. If you go to the town website where it says town government, you go to committees, you can find the committee you're interested in and it will give you information about when it meets uh, current agendas and things like that. Is that what you mean, Myra? Well, yeah, that. Um, but there's also a big calendar and I think you can click on the date. I and don't know. It, I think there is. I'll check I, it I've, out. I have found, you know, it's not the easiest website to use, but it's not the worst at all. I mean, I, I would say there are things. The reason I asked the question about the other thing is sometimes things are embedded so deeply in a website that right. you have to dig too hard to find them. And the, the part about finding interpretive services has to be really clearly um, available. You know, it has to be something that yeah, people can exactly. find. Exactly. Hey, I remember uh, years ago, I participated in some meetings. They had a device that was called closed captioning and right. like whatever the speaker would speak and it would put it on a screen and I thought if the town would have something like that there is no need for interpreter or anything it just all they need to do is read it so yeah maybe you have to hire somebody could... to type all that in Right? Well, I will say with no, Zoom. It automatically does it, I think. No, no. nobody type. No. no. That's a closed no. captioner. That's a closed captioner. No. It's, it's a, a human being. Have to have somebody the there. Yes, there's someone there. Even if they're not in the room, they're actually typing on their computer. Yep. Oh, really? Um, yeah. yeah. So with the Zoom platform, we do actually have the capability right. of using closed caption. Right. Um, and actually we can turn it on right now uh if i if if i am allowed to i'm not sure if i'm allowed to we uh, so it just uses voice recognition it does and so the the no it's not perfect so for instance uh it doesn't understand the word amherst <laughs> so it always misspells that and so um it doesn't, it's not perfect. So if, if it doesn't hear you, you know, perfectly, if someone mumbles or, or, or whatever, um, it doesn't pick it up perfectly. There is a way to then, um, for a staff person to then read because it, it actually becomes like a transcript afterwards. So there is a way to edit it afterwards before that goes on um, as you've, been told and maybe viewed um, all our recordings are then posted on um, the town of Amherst YouTube channel. So those closed captions that have spelling mistakes or whatever, um, those could be edited and corrected. I, I don't know how time consuming that is. And, you know, in, mm -hmm. and with that, it, for me, it makes me wonder how feasible that is. Um, if it's, you know, sort of a half an hour of fixing fixing spelling mistakes that's one thing if it if it's several hours of fixing spelling mistakes that's that's a uh, a large a bigger question i don't think it's a half an hour yeah <laughs> nothing's a half an hour <laughs> um, all right so anyway those are things to talk about but i think the website is something we should put on the on the next 
um, agenda. I want to get to the number one old business thing. Um, and I want to thank Marty for going out into yeah. the field and, and doing the work that we had asked someone else to do for four months and that right. didn't get done. Um, and so, um, Marty, do you want to talk about how you did it? And then um, Maureen got a response um, when she sent, she, Maureen sent Marty's uh, spreadsheet to Guilford Mooring and many other people. And she did receive a response. So I'd like her to tell us about that. But Marty, you want to talk about how long that took you? How much you want to build a town for doing it? <laughs> yeah, I should. Um, yeah, absolutely. So it took about three hours to go to each um, intersection. There's 13 of them. Um, what we got from the DPW was a list of their equipment and nothing more. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, they listed uh, the Pomeroy um, West Street intersection, which has no, by the way, no pedestrian signals. So anything right. we do there will be better than what's there. Um, so it took about three hours, three, three and a half hours to do that. And then it took another, probably I spent another three hours creating the spreadsheet and, and uh, transcribing all of the information that I collected. Uh, the upshot is that we've really got a mishmash of controls. They're different. I mean, there's some intersections where there's four different types of controls. Um, they're not consistent. It's not consistent what they what they do or say. Um, none of them are. You can hear past about five feet from the button if you're lucky. Um, I was did it on Saturday morning, through I think I started about eleven o'clock and finished about two thirty. And so, you know, it was peak time at all these intersections. There was a lot, you know, there was traffic and, and you can't hear anything. Some of them say, wait, some of them, I'm not sure that they have, if there's a question mark on the spreadsheet, it means that I can't tell whether that's actually an audible signal or not. Um, it looked like it was, but there are some of the signals that don't have, um, some of the signals have little pinholes in them that you can you can see that there's a speaker there. But some of them, the, I think the newer ones don't have that anymore. The other thing that was disturbing is we've got a bunch of the signs that tell you how to use it that are completely washed out. They need to be replaced. And just the fact that the audibles are not working is, is disturbing. Actually, the best one is the one that's up on, it crosses from the new uh, police state, UMass police station on East Pleasant Street um, and Eastman Lane. That one moves, but you can hear it almost halfway across the street. The way these things are supposed to work is that when I push the button to cross the street, the audible is audible from where I'm leaving to the midpoint of the street. And then it picks up the one across the street right. for the last half. And none of that works. And my concern with this is beyond the fact that it's not, it's not right for our citizens is the fact that now that we have the survey, this is why I was a little reluctant to do the survey. Now that we have a survey and it's a public document, um, if someone's hurt in those intersections, the town now has a great liability. Mm -hmm. right. Once you know there's a danger, you have to fix it. Right. So that's- Oh, I think, I think Guilford soapbox. stated, Maureen, I mean, uh, Marty, Guilford stated in a public meeting on March 18th, that he knew that many of them were disabled. He had disabled some of them and that many of them didn't work. So he has said that publicly. Well. In March. So now what's he gonna- I don't even know how to respond to that. Yeah. Right. That is just- It's a big- It's a big- Unconscionable. Yep. He should that lose is, his job. Yeah. Well. I, I agree. 
<laughs> well, how about <laughs> that 50,000 they have? Couldn't they use that, focus that money to go to these signals? The, what did you the, ask, sir, and the what that they have? I, if I'm not wrong, Maureen said there's 50,000 there that is to be used for uh, accessibility needs. Could that be just focused and put into the signals? In the FY21? And make yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. The FY20 was, we said we'd like it to go to website, um, but FY21 is now. Yeah. I mean, 21, now it's FY22. Yeah, Sorry. I mean, that's yeah. his responsibility. You know, what's yeah. he going to do about it? So Maureen, would you like to tell us what the response was when you sent the letter to, uh, to Guilford with Marty's spreadsheet on it? Uh, I don't have it in front of me, uh, but it basically, he asked, do they want the volume turned up? <laughs> no, actually, he said, he said, nice. Uh, actually, what he said was, nice. They could have done that a long time ago. Do they want the volume turned up? Is exactly what he said. God, that's damn I was so question. astounded by it that I do remember it. <laughs> it's a rhetorical question. It goes without saying. So Clueless. clearly, he doesn't understand that the law says that any services that the town provides have to be accessible. It's not up to him to decide which ones should be accessible and which ones shouldn't. If, right. you, if he drives the car, he knows to stop at a red light because he can see it. Other people, according to the law, that has to work for people who can't see it and want to hear it. It's just using a different, a different sense to cross the street. Exactly. He gets a red light, he gets a walk light, he gets a green arrow. All the rest of us get would be a bell or a thing that says which direction we're going in good stoplights. And it's not up to him. I, he doesn't understand the law and he has thumbed his nose yeah. at us. And I, he I, care. I can't believe it. He doesn't because care. probably he's getting complaints from the businesses around or from residences around because similar thing happened in my neighborhood about the streets, uh, street lights. I, they are in our street, they have street lights in every corner and on the cul-de-sacs. And there is some group that want those shut off because they cannot sleep in there. It comes to their bedrooms. And I said, this is an accessibility issue. I feel safe with those street lights. Please don't uh, ask the town to turn them off. If you want, it's very simple to get the drapes that uh, shade the lights, in incoming right. lights. So it is the pressure that they don't want to hear from the neighbors of those intersections. So that they are in a dilemma, which I understand, but there are you know, very and, few, uh, all he needs to... Mm -hmm. There are very few residences near these lights. Right. There absolutely are very few. That's correct. Yeah, the, the closest mm -hmm. ones are down at uh, East Hadley Road and 116 by the old grist mill. Yep. There's a couple of houses there. The people at the yeah. gristmill probably don't want it on, but sorry. Yeah. Um, I will so, say that I have, um, I it looks like I have two scheduled meetings uh, this week um, to go. Um, well, I'll talk about one specific. I have two grant related meetings um, with staff this week, but I'll talk about the one on Friday. It's with the assistant town manager, uh, David Zomack, uh, Sean Mangano, who's our finance director, mm -hmm. and uh, Rob Mora, the building commissioner, and Jeremiah LaPlante, our facilities manager. Um, and it's to talk about ADA prod uh, projects. Um, and so 
you know, Dave Zomack and Rob and, and Jeremiah and Sean um, Mangano, um, you know, I've had a few meetings with them over the last couple months and they are very in tuned and, uh, you know, welcoming of making these improvements. Um, Sean Mangano being the money man. So he's the most important person, I guess, to involve into these meetings. So the town does, um, you know, want to make these improvements. Um, and so I will, of course, be relaying all your feedback um, at this meeting on Friday. Um, and, you know, as you said, it, you know, we're, A, we, you know, we don't want accidents to occur and have un, unsafe intersections, um, but B, um, it's the law. So um, the town, you know, it, it's in their best interest to obey by the law and, 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 and you know, and make it, making um you know all public rights of way um accessible for everyone so i i i uh, i definitely empathize with everyone's frustration about this but i i definitely feel that you know dave zomack um particularly uh will be really res respective of 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 these comments and to push this forward to mm -hmm. find funding if it's through the ada account or maybe through the mo the Mass Office on Disability um, grant, or perhaps it's through DPW account, you know, uh, accounts that they already have. Um, and we don't know if they're broken or they just need to flip the switch. Um, so we don't know if, or maybe Marty knows. I don't know, Marty. Um, there are a couple of things I want to say. One is they're probably going to have to get a, te a specialist technician out. It's not going to be, um, In you know, Joe DPW guy. It's right. going to be a programmer from the controls company. They come around. I know we use them at UMass. Um, but the other thing that I'm a little concerned about it is a problem that I've had in other instances. And that is using this budget for doing something that is maintenance. Mm, right. Once yep. the once the installation is done, the town takes over the maintenance of it. Right. It should come out of maintenance budget. Correct. And if they're not if they're not budgeting for this, then somebody needs to review the the DPW's budget. Yep. They should have money to do these kinds of things all the time. Maureen. You can bet they would have money if the red light didn't work, if the visual yes. part didn't work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so um, where does, do we go Nancy, from here? I mean, I, has her hand up. Oh, OK. Who does? Elise. OK. Elise, you have to yell in because I can't see your hand. OK. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have a raised hand um, emoji. No, just, just yell in like everybody else. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, um, it's not just flipping a switch. I'm gonna share my experience with those lights. Sometimes I press the button and I hear, you know, a voice that says wait, which is very low pitched. And then I don't, there's no signal that says it's time to go. So it's, it's not only flipping a switch, it's a volume, definitely volume. And many of them, like the one in front of the post office don't even have that. So just to share that, um, and especially if somebody, like the other day, there was somebody with a loud car stereo and I couldn't even hear the traffic. Mm. So I need, we need those buttons. We, we need those audible signals. Yeah. Thank you, Elise. That's, that's mm -hmm. a, a point very well taken. Pat, did you yeah. have something? Yeah, I was wondering if um, people would be comfortable if I, Ask if I could attend, ask Dave if I could attend this meeting and possibly Myra or another member of the committee Mar so could also attend this meeting or? Um, I could certainly ask Dave. Um, it is, um, the meeting is for ADA projects, but it's also for other. Um, right, but if they could attend topics. for the period of time that it was yeah. ADA. 
Um, I'll certainly ask. Um, it might just make more sense to, for us to have a staff meeting to have sort of a preliminary yeah. conversation, and then perhaps um, next week yeah. uh, we could have a follow up meeting if that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on the finance committee, so I might Ooh. on my own just say, hey, <laughs> yep. when I attend, because then the other projects would be of interest as well. Okay. I, and I'll do that part, Maureen. But if you could find out about a member of the committee, that'd be grand. Sure, yep. I Good idea. So I think some of this stuff was actually spelled out with great care in the report that we received from the consultant last fall. The, that report did not cover all of these lights. Marty covered them, but that report covered the ones in town. And there was enough information even right there about their lack of operational status because um, yep. it said that. And so, it, Marty, you didn't provide any information endangering anyone. They've even had an official report sitting around for now nine months that said that. And they haven't done anything with it. So I'm really concerned about, about this. And I'm, I mean, I don't even know what we're supposed to do. And Pat, maybe you can help us with this. Um, this is not the first time that Guilford Mooring has treated things that this committee is um, very involved in for the protection of the people in this community with a little disdain. I mean, he talked to the town council at one point, I assume you heard him. I don't know the date right now, but he said, you know, he said basically they're only advisory and there's no rules in the federal government yet. There's no rules that say anything about whether this has to be done with the uh, with the signals at Pomeroy. He is technically right about both of those things. Right. That's not the point. The point is that. Um, that, you know, when I sent those in those letters way back with the thing from the executive director of the um, accessibility board, when I the US access board, when I sent that all to him, I said there are currently no regulations, it should have been no revelation for him to tell you that there aren't any, but right. I said that they're working on promulgating them. And the reason they don't have them is because for four years, they weren't allowed to have any new regulations. So that was one thing. And yes, we are advisory. We are not the law. That is beside the point. We're a standing committee of this town and they're supposed to hear what we have to say. And for him to thumb his nose at us in a public meeting, I thought was pretty outrageous. I don't know if you heard it the same way I did. Pat. Yeah, yeah I not as strongly as you, I must admit, because but yes, and he shows disdain for many people, but that doesn't make any of it okay. Um, mm. yeah. So I wonder if it's, I don't know if you need to talk to the town manager as a member of the town council about any of this, but I'm really feeling frustrated because, well, the town has liability, absolutely. And frankly, when I joined this committee, um, someone who's no longer on it, told me about all the trials and tribulations of even getting the snow cleaned up in the winter. And okay. we wrote a letter about that, right? For Remember for COVID, we said, uh-oh, it's gonna be even worse than usual because the businesses aren't even open. So we wrote a letter about that. And last year we had very little snow, so there wasn't like a real problem. But I don't know, I, I feel like there's just, a lot of work not getting done and a lot of disdain coming at least our way. I don't know anything else because I don't know about any other disdain, but I, I don't know what we need to do about it. And it, I will email. We can't allow it without the town manager hearing about it. I will email um, the town manager a short note about it and ask him if he would like to talk to the committee. Would you guys be comfortable if he did that or should I? Uh, just, uh, Pat, um, although I'm completely fine if you do that, um, just in context of the sort of protocol for your staff liaison. Well, I do what the committee asks me to do. Okay. I'm supposed to be absolutely I, I, silent. And if we were in the room together, I'm supposed to not sit at the same table. Mm -hmm. and just be a conduit and this so this would be doing my job which would be to relay a complaint 
So I don't know how the committee feels about it. I said my piece. I'm not the committee. I'm just the one that's really mad. Pat, if, if you wouldn't mind, um, I think I, um, I, I would like to reach out to Dave Zomack and to Paul Bockelman about a variety okay. of these topics. Uh, and then you could certainly send a follow up. Okay. Thank you. Would you send me a copy of what you send out then, Maureen? Sure. So or it, it may be just a, a phone conversation or in person conversation about these topics. Okay. Um, so you can go ahead and send your email. Yeah, yeah. don't wait. Okay. I, but I, 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 but I will, it. as the That's... staff liaison to this board, um, talk to um, the town manager and, and assistant town manager about, about these topics um, because, um, you know, they, they obviously know that the, these are important topics um, that need to be addressed and um, and unfortunately you know things things have be, been delayed in particular this year I don't know what the work capacity is in other towns but um, I do know that everyone in town hall is is working well over 40 hours every week, sometimes uh, six, seven days a week um, for the entire extent of, of 2020 and into mm -hmm. 2021. Um, and so um, it has been a very um, strenuous year for probably all departments. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I don't want to defend Guilford by any means, but I, I, I do know that all departments have been working over capacity and uh, you know I, I would say frankly or, or at burnout levels months ago so right well I will only move forward with an email to Paul if that's what the committee wants me to do okay so we'll give we'll give you a We'll give you a little shot at this, but I, 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 yeah, let's move on to the grants. You have three grants listed there. One, yeah. one is 2020, one is 2022, and one is, I think we talked about the MOD one. The yes. Deal. So yeah. um, if you've been in downtown lately, um, it, uh, in context of the 2020 MOD grant, um, mm -hmm. the contractors have finished uh, redoing uh, the sidewalk, which is known as Pleasant Walk. Um, it is <laughs> the sidewalk ad adjacent to uh, the old Starbucks location. It connects uh, downtown to the parking lot and garage behind like Antonio's. So that has been officially completed um, and uh, um, and the crosswalk right next to Pleasant Walk, which is in front of the old Starbucks and CVS, um, they should be that should be finished, or is um, about ninety percent finished, um, and that should be finished in hopefully the next couple of days. Um, and then um, once that is completed, they will be uh, redoing the crosswalk at the intersection of. North Pleasant and Coles Lane, where uh, Bruegel's Bagel is located. Um, and so that hopefully should be completed um, by the end of this month. Um, and so that's good news. And um, more good news. And I'm very, again, proud of this committee. Um, so um, a couple meetings ago, I had told you that the town was applying for um, a third round of uh, a mass DOT shared streets and spaces grant application. And so um, a couple of meetings ago, we, I, I told you the sort of initial proposal. And then after discussion, we, we as a group um, helped sort of evolve the grant application. So um, we were awarded the grant. And I'll show you, uh, although I'll just, I'll show you the, the images and describe them. So view, view. Uh, the work needs to be done by the end of December, 2021. Wow. Yep. And um, that's cool. Yeah. So let me just go to this page. So, so that's, if anybody doesn't oops. remember, that's the triangle street, um, triangles, triangle street and prey street. 
and East Pleasant Street and Prey Street. Correct. Yes. So this image shows uh, Triangle Street where my mouse is. And so they're going to redo um, all the crosswalks at Prey, Triangle, and maybe North Whitney Street. I, I can't remember what street this is. No, not North Whitney. Um, hi. No, I forget. Where are you? Uh, hold on. Maybe I can figure this out. Uh, it just keeps um, jumping. Sorry. Um, well, it's the little side street that brings you back to like Chestnut Street. Um, oh, um, can't think of it. I can't but, either. But that little street. <laughs> Anyways. Brings you so back to Chestnut Street from where? Um, from where? Mm, where like TD Bank North is and, and, um, and well, where Prey Street uh, exits onto Triangle Street, there's, uh, you could, you know, if you were on Prey Street, you could take a left or a right onto Triangle Street. Oh, you mean Street. Cottage Street? Cottage, yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you. that's Sorry. it. Yep, of course. Okay, okay. So, yeah, that's, um, that's the one that I would use all the time. So that's really yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Th thank you for remembering. I knew it was Cottage Street. Okay, so anyways, they're going to redo the crosswalk there. I'm going to zoom in here. And they're going to add um, the rectangular rapid flashing beacon signs um, on both sides of the crosswalk. Um, and um, I advocated that a third one would be added here. So, um, and where? So um, I can't see your mouse. Yeah, so. sorry. So if you're on the north side of Triangle Street, um, there will be a, a RRFB, the Rectangular Robert, Rapid yeah. Flashing Beacon sign, which will be Ooh. solar run, and it will also have audible uh, signal as well. Um, so then you would cross over to the south side of Triangle Street. And then uh, you would, I don't believe there is a sidewalk on that side of Prey Street. So then you would cross over to the, over um, again onto Triangle Street um, to connect to the Prey Street sidewalk, which is for the full extent of Prey Street, um, which then connects you to uh, East Pleasant Street. And makes a right angle turn. Yeah. Correct. And mm -hmm. so I will say currently there are no crosswalks along Prey Street. It's just kind of like a there's sidewalk. There's also not a then, continuous sidewalk. Yeah, because there's a there's like little there's a lot parking of, lots. Yeah, it's not easy, actually. I did it. Yeah. Um, it's not easy. Um, but maybe we can a little bit at a time. So can we actually, Elise, you might actually walk around there too. Um is can we meet with people to make sure we understand how they're going to do it and where they're going to do it? Because I know that it's possible that we could, you know, that small changes can be made. I'd like to ask Elise about the ones that are finished on North Pleasant. Have you crossed in that new crosswalk by CVS? Um, I don't, yeah, I have, but I don't think it's finished yet though. I don't it's think not it's finished, finished yet. Yeah. yeah. They um, stumbled upon a lot of, um, what is the texture and visual like? What can you see there, and what's the what would you be able to feel there with your feet um, or your I think, I think they might have put in. I don't see much. I don't think there's much difference yet. Um, I think they did put in a, a a tactile thing near the curb. I think they did that. Um, okay. I've kind of been avoiding it during the construction, so I haven't used okay. it much. Maureen, do you know how would, people are going to yeah. know if they're in the crosswalk going straight? Is there any kind of tax, tactile anything on the street there? Yes. So similar to this uh, uh, application or approved grant um, and the MOD grant is that there's going to be imprinted uh, thermoplastic crosswalks with detectable yeah. warning surfaces. Um, so. OK. I mean, I heard yeah. that. I don't know what that means. Martin, yeah, and I you know what that means? <laughs> I haven't used it much because I, you know, there's construction and I haven't really felt safe walking around there yet. Yeah, yeah so. it's been very noisy. Marty, um, do you know what that is? <laughs> um, I think it's it's uh, what they use at UMass. It's the 
um, it's a poured product that, that they then stamp. Oh yep, yeah, exactly, exactly. And so it's not so, actually yeah. brick. It may look like brick, but it, uh, I believe it would be concrete with a stamp. It's not concrete. Okay, okay. Uh, it's thermoplastic. So oh, it's thank you. Yeah. yeah. It's a flexible material. The problem with the concrete is that it cracks up. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. So it's a flexible oh. material. So you should be able to tell when you're using a cane, you should be able to tell when you're on that versus asphalt because it's going to have a different uh, a different response. Um, it, it sh you should be able to, but I think you said a couple of. Oh, you mean, mean that's the one over by the, the by the the um, University Drive? Yes. Roundabout. Yeah. Okay. It might be a little bit easier if I knew it was a straight run with the University of Drive one. It's not the easiest thing to feel, but it's not. It you know, if you had time, it would be okay. Okay. So I have a question. Um, if it's like an overlay, um, is it does it get slippery when wet? It's not an over. It's not an overlay. It's a different product. If you go to the crosswalk between CVS and um, the old Starbucks that we were talking about that's unfinished yet, you'll notice that it, the surface of the walkway right now is about an inch and a half lower than the, the rest of the street. And it's cut very straight because they're gonna put this thermoplastic material in that, that lowered area. So it's flush with the road and then it's stamped. Okay. So it's not like an overlay. It's actually a product that you drive over and walk on. So similar to the um, ones near the curb texture? Yeah. No, it's no. a different, the curb cuts have a particular uh, texture. They're a little round, uh, truncated dimples. domes. Yeah, truncated domes. Thank you for yeah. the right word. Those are felt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is different. A different thing. Okay. Well, that's yeah. good actually, because then you know you're coming up to a curb. Yeah. yeah. And it'll have a visual, like they'll have a big line on the side, so it's very visible mm -hmm. where it is. Or does okay. it end up having stripes across it? Oh, excellent. I okay. don't know. How do they do it? So, um, they paint no. it. They pa there's a yep. surfacing paint they put on it and the standard around here has been red in the center and then uh, foot wide st white stripes on either side. Oh, that should be very visible. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it does It does turn out to be yeah. very visible. Yeah, okay. Great. Yeah, and so if you can if you can see the image that I'm showing you. Um, yeah. Oh, yes. That's mm -hmm. um, what yes. Marty was describing. Um, Fantastic. So yeah. Yep. Yep. And then there would be the the truncated domes at the curb cut. I guess the landing at the at the end of each each end of the crosswalk. And so just okay. to um, let me go back to the the slide I was going to show. Um, one more. And so give me one second. So we talked about the improvements along the Triangle Prey Cottage Street intersection, and then. Um, the crosswalks along the full extent of Prey Street. And then there'll be a, a, a new uh, crosswalk provided along East Pleasant Street, which then connects to uh, the existing crosswalk over to Kendrick Park. And again, that will, all these crosswalk uh, replacements will have the imprinted thermoplastic crosswalks with uh, the truncated domes on each side. And then, so at the East Pleasant Crosswalk, they'll add the uh, rectangular rapid flashing beacon signs with audible yeah. signals on both sides of, of that crosswalk. And so that will be a um, such a wonderful addition to downtown, yep. creating a corridor for folks coming from, you know, the neighborhoods of, you know, High Street, you know, Cottage Street, Chestnut Street, you know, the, the middle school, the high school, uh, anyone, any ages, any mobilities that want to go from there 
to connect to downtown, you know, either to Kendrick mm -hmm. Park or to the downtown library or shops, restaurants, et cetera. So yeah. It's great. It's about coming from Chestnut Court. Parking. Coming from Chestnut Court as well. I mean, it's anything up East Pleasant Street. And Chestnut Correct. Court is very close to there as well. Correct. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, this is definitely a win-win for all, you know, all demographics that are want to come, you know, come to into downtown and want to leave downtown and want to take a safe way. Um, um, if you're coming by, if you're coming as a pedestrian. So yeah, so this is wonderful. And, and thank you so much for your recommendations about specifically for the crosswalk improvement at East Pleasant Street. Yep. So how um, about yep. handicap parking? Well, that's not in this scope of project, <laughs> but <laughs> Um, we can certainly take a look at that in the, you know, in the future. I mean, if they're going to put so much money into this, couldn't they spare some more to focus on the handicapped parking? Because that's an issue in downtown. Sure. Again, that's not in the scope of work for this specific grant, but, um, I can certainly, um, you know, relay the message to um, staff about whether more on street ADA parking spaces or off street ADA spaces could be provided uh, in downtown. So, so well taken. there's also a lot going on right now with the town. They're talking about maybe putting in another garage, but maybe yes, maybe no. And there's yeah. there are a lot yeah. of people on the town council my counselors for sure, who seem to believe that there is much more than adequate parking downtown. If only people would be willing to not get out of the car and walk right into the building in front of it. So I think if you have a concern, um, I think it would be really good if you wrote that up in a way that you could, I don't know if you can quantify what we've got or what we need, you know, and where we need it, but there are a lot of town councilors who do not see parking downtown as a problem and they're taking out parking. I know, especially the one in front of the town hall now that's going to be abolished and there are a couple of handicapped parking places there. Okay. So, but what happens is because the handicapped parking is so limited and so difficult, what does it do? It discourages me from even going and trying there, you know, so, but well, that's a I problem. Th I think you should talk about that specifically. Like, I mean, I'd be happy to write a letter, but I don't really, because I don't drive a car. I don't know where the specific mm -hmm. problems are and where the bad parking is, but they have voted to take it all out in front of town hall. Um, and they really do not think it's a problem. And no matter what people, and there are some people on the council who have said repeatedly that it's difficult for older people and it's difficult for this and it's difficult for that. And it seems to just go over everybody's head. So- I lost that vote. I voted to keep the parking there along with Sarah Schwartz and Kathy Shane and some other- Yeah, people. it was like eight to five or something. Um, oh, I kept yeah. getting rid of that. Um, but uh, anyway, I don't, I don't know what to do about that. So if you could get specific, that would be really helpful because then we could write something that was specific. Um, are you well, like the Amherst Cinema, for example, parking by the Amherst Cinema is a problem. And once I parked uh, behind the cinema, but it belongs to Bank of America. So there was a guy and he wouldn't let me park there. So. You know, it's a challenge. So what happens personally, I know if it is too difficult and I said, heck with it, I'm not even going to do my business there. But, you know, I mean, they don't realize it's a big problem because there are, it is not encouraging people to use the town, but discourages some groups, unfortunately. I have a clarifying question. But I'll be, 
but I can, you know, write something up and share with all of you. And then I would appreciate that because then we can make it into something it. if it's specific. Tori, what did you have? Um, so they're going to take out the spaces in front of the town hall. So do you mean, are you talking about the on street parking on Main Street? Or are you talking about that no. little parking lot? Uh, the upper parking lot on the the green in the Amherst Common. Yeah, what, that's that one. one. They're yeah. taking they're taking out that that parking lot altogether. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because the town council believes that it's supposed to be a public park, and they don't think parking is a problem. I know some yeah. people do, yeah. but most of them don't. That parking I, I, lot is usually packed. Mm -hmm. Especially if we have things going on downtown. I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's at least two handicapped spaces there. Maybe more. I can't remember now, but. Oh, no, I, they say uh, they're going to have some, handicapped spaces. In the upper. Pat, where are they going to be? The handicapped spaces? He says he's not uh, taking those uh, out. Spring Street. Uh -oh. I'm sorry, what? Um, allegedly, they did make a question. There was a question about the handicapped spaces that would be lost. And I think Guilford said that they would be retained. They would be put someplace else. But I don't know where. So uh, maybe I just, just along up, the street. Uh, I just pulled up on my screen. Um, this was the plan that was approved by the town council on May 24th. And um, you are correct. The parking spaces in the existing parking lot that's you know directly in front of town hall um, has been removed um, there are two on street uh, ada spaces along boltwood uh up boltwood walk ave um and those uh will remain um and um, and then there's, of course, uh, on street parking along Boltwood Ave for the full extent um, of, of that street. And then there is um, going to be added. This is, uh, although this plan was approved by the town council, um, it still needs to be refined and adjusted accordingly as they get into sort of the real construction details. So some of these. Some of these layouts could be slightly different when all said and done, but there will be um, parallel parking according to this plan along Main Street, um, and I um, would would suspect that there would be some of those that would be ADA parking spaces. Um, Maureen, then, you can't make those because the slope there. Right, is, you're not going to be able to. To put handicap there. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, yeah. That, that makes but sense. Not, and way also, too deep, steep. also, how do you get and out also, of your how do you get out of your car when you're the traffic is there? Right. That's not accessible. Or van. Or yeah. van. How do you get out of your van? Lower the right. lift. Well, yeah. all very good points. Uh, yeah. So as you can see, where my if if you can see where my mouse is hovering, where it says hand um, ADA parking spaces. Yeah. You know uh, the these parallel, these angled parkings along Main Street don't say ADA spaces. So um, mm -hmm. I was just kind of guessing, but no, that, that's a good point that because of the grading that that would be prohibitive of becoming a, an ADA space. I believe there are, there is a ADA space along Main Street at the Main Street entrance to Town Hall. And there are, there is a, although this plan doesn't show the existing parking lot behind town hall there are ada spaces behind there and i do know that uh the sean mangano and um is leading currently leading an effort to um take steps uh about parking in downtown and i'm sure that the, this specific area will be revisited uh, regarding parking and and making you know um, more ADA spaces. Perhaps the parking lot behind Town Hall 
um, perhaps, you know, additional ADA spaces could be provided back there um, if that's uh, a concern for folks. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you this plan that was approved by the town council. Marty has her hand up. Yeah, I have my hand up. Um, so Boltwood is going to come become one way south. That's right. So right. if I'm coming, if I'm coming in a van and I need yeah. to park, the problem is that my van opens on the other side so my Correct. ramp instead of being where it should be is going to be in the street mm -hmm. they need to review that because you can't park there and get so, out of your vehicle so wait, sorry marty um i'm such a visual person so say you're driving down driving down you park here in a in a van and yeah. and then so then someone gets out of the van with a wheelchair they're exiting out into the street into the street they've got to put their ramp out into the street yeah That's so dangerous. what's up with uh what do you think so well why why couldn't they get out on the this side because they don't have a door on that side yeah typical the handicap is... van gets uh, opens out on the passenger on side not side. the driver's yeah. side uh -oh. Now, Saren's car, you yeah. get out on the driver's side. No. No. Oh, you got a new it's car? On the passenger side. Yeah. You got the a new car? Is on the... No, it's the, it's a big uh, van. And I oh, have you don't have your van. little brown car anymore? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I. So no, it's Marty... not. I don't. Oh, yeah, I have vans. And oh, okay. The, I didn't realize the that. Lift, the, and also, Stay the lift opened on the uh, sidewalk, there usually is not enough maneuvering space on the sidewalk also. So these parallel parking places are not suitable for van accessible places. Unless Period. they're deep enough. Unless yeah, enough. yeah. So because the, I have the same problem in my voting place in Monson Library, and I talked about this so many times, and nobody listens. You know, so. So to get back to Marty's point, um, you know, well, d depth is like the next layer of question. But um, if the if the ADA space, uh, well, they can have two ADA spaces here and or uh, and then add two more here or just swap them out and then make sure that this sidewalk, the grading and the width of the sidewalk aisle uh, is wide enough to accommodate someone getting out of the van with that It work? needs to be eight feet wide. So this, this says that the, the parking space is eight the feet wide. The parking space is eight feet wide and the access aisle is eight feet. Right, you need yeah. 16 feet. Yeah. yeah. So, so Maureen, is this going to be designed by Guilford or is they are they hiring somebody to do this? <laughs> uh, give me, wait, wait, does it, everyone just give me one second. I'm using my post-it to measure out the sidewalk. So yeah, like the sidewalk looks like it's like five feet. Yeah, yeah it's way yeah. too small. five feet in the... Those All right. Spaces, well, well, you know, like everything, there's always, you know, it's a design challenge. And um, so now I am going to go to the corner of this page and see who prepared it. Um, so give me a minute. Looks like Department of Public Works, Planning Department. Uh, conceptual plan i do know that they are hiring a consultant to um finalize the plans um and so oh survey oh survey prepared by i do know that west weston and samson um engineering firm um did uh was very heavily involved with the initial design and I, I do believe that a consultant, most likely from Weston and Sampson, will be uh, um, 
hired again to help finalize and create all the construction details and in, in, in construction plans related to this project. And, um, and the town is aware that you as a board committee has requested that you review this at both 95% review and at 100% review or maybe 95 90. is Nin so late. 95? I thought we said 50. 50. Yeah. You and might have somebody started, had told me that have... even 25 is what we should be doing because 50, they've made a lot of decisions already. 25 is yeah. better, but 95 yeah. is no good. It's all done then. Yeah. <laughs> let me, uh, I will go back to, I, I could, I could just have a bad memory. So let, I'm going to make a note to check on those percentages. So I think uh, I, I would like a motion from this committee to ask Pat to go back to the town council and tell them that the, the plan as constituted for the, um, for the North common while well-intentioned has really cut off legitimate legal handicap parking for people who use vans, people who use a regular old car and just pull out their, you know, somebody pulls out the walker from the trunk is a different story. But mm -hmm. if you are driving and if yeah. you are using a van, this is not going to work. And the town council needs to know that. And in fact, the town council should have been told that originally by the person who drew up the plan that you in fact will be losing van accessible spaces. Yeah. And uh, if I'm not but wrong- But anyway, can I, all... is, is the, can I just interrupt? Is the, is the committee interested in having Pat talk to people about that? Yes. 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 Sorry. And, and and I, uh, yeah. some old members might remember, Chris uh, Burstrom came to our meeting or we discussed a design prior to this one. And it was going to leave a couple of handicapped parking places very close to the town hall. They didn't vote for that. So they were not, huh? They didn't they vote didn't for that. Vote. They had the option. Oh, they did? Yeah, they had the option to vote for a modified parking on the North Common or to get rid of it, and they voted to get rid of it. So Five of us who did was not in this meeting. <laughs> so, what are your thoughts about not knowing intimately about these topics? Um, you know, does does every ADA parking space need to be for a van? And, no, no, and but... can can if there is parking spaces behind town hall that would accommodate the 16 feet width for the space itself and for the aisle for a van would that would would that be acceptable um okay state code says uh, I'm just looking for the number. One of every eight accessible spaces has to be van accessible. Every eight spaces. And that's M M A A B. That's M A A B. Every eight, 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 eight spaces in a parking lot. That are over every how many? eight accessible spaces. Every eight accessible spaces need, and that's within a parking lot. So if you have two disparate parking lots, each one has to have van accessible. So when we talk talk about on street parking, I don't think M A A B regulations get into that. That gets into parking lots. M A A B actually. Um, Technically, uh, van that. accessibles are are on street parking is not parallel parking is not allowed. No, if you look at the yeah. reg. Yeah. Parallel parking for accessibility is not an option. Right. 
So you can, right. Maureen, you can have handicap parking. Like I said, the person with the walker, the person who blah, 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 the, you know, like near the entrance to the blah, blah, blah. They have, there are regulations about how much of that you have to have per, mm -hmm. per the number of spaces. We're not talking about that. We're talking about van accessible spaces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Marty, I'm actually could you talking send about that information all. to me? Um, it's just the 521 CMR. You can look okay. it up. 521 CMR. It's, uh, there's a whole section on uh, parking, which is gotcha. chapter 23. Chapter, thank you. And there's diagrams and things, but parallel parking doesn't work for either, yeah, especially it when it's on a one-way street, right. yes. because right, if right. your passenger is you're driving street. and parking right. on, a, on the yeah. side of the street, in this case, if your passenger gets out, they're not going, they're going to be in the street. Yes, there's indeed. not enough yeah. room. Whereas if the cars turn the other way, they could get off onto the, the path. It's nice having the path on one side. It doesn't work on a one-way street because you can't maneuver the car to get the access aisle. Right. One of the reasons they did one way was so they want because they thought they could sneak in more parking there. Um, and a lot of people objected to it. Um, but that's what they did. And I mean, if what they did is not going to be able to comply and is going to make parking with a van more difficult downtown. Yeah. In what way does that serve the public interest? It serves the people yeah. who ride bicycles to downtown. I know that they don't care about that. They want parks. They well, represent I can see me. a solution to this. And that is simply make the path on the west side, next to those parking spaces, eight feet. Then if you have a van, you can pull into those, make okay. those handicapped. But I'd make both sides handicapped because you've still got the situation where the driver may be in a chair. Yep. So it's gonna affect, you know, which side of the street you're going to get off on, but that's the only way I can see solving it. Well, this has been really um, helpful for me, and um, I've been typing all these notes. Um, it's helpful for me and educational for me because I, I, I don't, I don't know all, and that's okay. And that's why we have Marty. <laughs> um, I don't know at all. But I know but a bit I'm of sorry it. to say this, Maureen. This is what the director of public works who proposes these things is supposed to know. Right. And that's a tremendous disturbance to me. And I don't know, Pat, you'll have to say whether the town council was really told about van accessible parking being compromised by proposal A or B. I don't know. No, we were so, not. Well, I, I would argue, or I'm not arguing, but it seems that my guesstimate is that the existing sidewalks on currently on Boltwood, Boltwood Ave are five feet. Therefore, there is no van accessible parking spaces on Boltwood Avenue. So there is, if that is the case, there would be no removal of van accessible parking spaces because they're they're taking them out of the parking lot. They have to put them back somewhere. Yeah. Right. So, so can, I get, back to, can I get back to the 50%, 95%, whatever? Because um, that grant you just got, that's fantastic. I want to make sure that they have a consultant or at least that they even talk to. I don't want to be the expert. I'm not even that good. I don't want to be the expert. I want them to make sure that there's somebody who's looking at that plan to tell them, yes, that is the absolute best place to put that. That is the way that you should demarcate it. The, the curb has to come up to here. The curb cut should be like this. There are people who know this stuff. I could provide you with a potential consultant who could tell them exactly, yeah, this is great. Put it right there or no. It would be really much better for, for visually impaired travelers if yeah. you move it this way. They need to not rely on themselves or on just a regular traffic consultant. Since you're doing this for accessibility, it has to end up accessible and they could easily do it wrong. I am happy to say that, um, that the town is working with uh, Stantec engineering firm, which is a 
I believe, an international engineering firm. Um, yeah, they have 50,000 employees. So um, they have provided much guidance um, with all of these uh, three rounds of mass DOT grants, including okay. this one. And so they will be sort of uh, shepherding us through this uh, design process. And well, I'd process. sure like to know, since I'm going to be using it, I would sure like to know where, the, which side of the, which side of the um, Prey Street, Triangle Street intersection they're going to put that on. And, you know, what, where are they going to put the crosswalk? And is it going to get me to a place that on the other side that is accessible? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I want to know that. And I'll go there and look at it and come up with a plan. And they may be, they may be right for sure, but I want to make sure that they are going to be right because it's a lot of money to spend and there's not going to be another shot at doing it right. So I just think, you know, especially since we're, we're you know, we, I, have, I have no confidence in the town, um, maybe the consultant, but I have no confidence in the town in the DPW. Neither do I. <laughs> well, folks, we're winding down to one almost <laughs> one o'clock. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, the next meeting, uh, let's see here, is the second Tuesday of August, which is August 10th. Does that work, does that work with everyone? Usual, yep. usual time, usual time. It would location. be way better for me if it could be a different week. If the other, the next week, does anybody care? Yeah, uh, I would prefer that the following week too. The seventeenth. I'll be out of town. August, the seventeenth. August seventeenth. Do that. Can August people 17th? do the seventeenth? Yes. yes. Thank you I so much. I can. I concur because I'm going to be out of town too, and I'd have to call in. So. so the 17th August 17th. Works. Okay. Is there I'm someone that doesn't work for? Uh, let me just check. Did Xander ever make it? No, no. she just sent no. me an email saying oh. sorry. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can do the 17th. Is there anyone who can't? No, I can do it. I can do it. Me too. Okay, great. Tori? Yeah, I can do it. Excellent. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Well, um, Pat, I, I would love it if you would report what you feel like you can report. And um, Maureen, thank you for all of this. You know, we're being very demanding of you, I, um, but I really appreciate your incredibly good naturedness about it. Um, it's my pleasure. It's my applause. pleasure to work with you. It's my, it's my, 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 my pleasure working with you and, and seeing this through and using my privilege to the benefit of those that don't, you know, that lack visual ability or, or mobility. Um, so I, I'm happy to use my privilege um, to, um, for your, for your benefit. And, and, and as a planner, my sole responsibility is to serve the public interest. So I, I'm, I'm happy to, to be part of this discussion. Well, well we thank, you. Thank, you. thank you, Maureen. Thank you, Marty, for all that work you did. Really, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Marty. Thanks. Because yeah. it would never have yeah. been done. Thank you so much. Okay, Maureen, could you send me uh, your rough notes? They don't have thank to be you. Uh, Bye -bye. just on the parking stuff. Sure. Yep. That uh, would be very helpful, and then I can contact the uh, Paul, and I can contact the council. There won't be a council meeting until August. Um, second i don't think oh, but nice. I, I will get, get a little break out to counselors before then okay sounds good um good yeah i let me um make these into full words and sentences yeah and well I, yeah <laughs> and i'll send those yeah, right. okay okay all right, all right. well have a great thank you everyone okay. thank you, you. Bye. Bye. Bye.